To kind of break down Inauguration Day, though, we have Fox 5's Tom Fitzgerald, who is still there at Capitol Hill. Uh, Tom, thanks for joining us today on News Now from Fox. Good to talk to you. Uh, in full disclosure, I will tell you, I have actually left the Capitol for once, and I'm now at a school in Montgomery County, Maryland, where we're reporting on uh, some of the changes that are ahead under the Biden administration, especially when it comes to schools. <laughs> you know, I thought you lived at the Capitol, so that's on that's on us over here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sleeping there. <laughs> I kinda, I, in all honesty, I kind of, I kind. That's fair. I kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess I just I want to outline Inauguration Day because we're still coming off of the excitement of that. It was it was a very busy day, lots of events that happened. So I want to get your views of everything that went down, what stuck out to you, and then we'll move a little bit into Biden's new administration as well. Well, you know, I, I think it boils down for those of us who were there and we were on the on the podium yesterday uh, into two areas. The, the logistical ta uh, challenge of pulling that inauguration off and then also, you know, the political job that was in front of President Biden. Um, for all intents and purposes, Washington, D.C. turned into Fort Capitol Hill for the better part of a week. Uh, there was steel fencing around large parts of not only the United States Capitol, but the National Mall up and around the White House. Roads were blocked for miles throughout the nation's capital. And then on the other hand, you had the political challenge that Joe Biden had. How do you speak to this divided nation and start to heal these wounds, these divides, these ideological chasms that have really pulled this country apart at the seams, not only at the last four years, but especially in the last two weeks, going back to that Wednesday raid at the United States Capitol, where, you know, as we all know now, rioters got into that building. I myself was barricaded for hours in an office inside the Capitol complex. So, you know, for, for Joe Biden, unity, unity was the message yesterday and you know so far biden has received high marks on what he was able to accomplish in that speech it wasn't the most soaring rhetoric we ever heard from an inaugural address it wasn't john f kennedy's ask not what your country can do for you but what you can do for your country but it also wasn't donald trump's uh carnage speech and so in, in that respect it was in Biden's voice, and it was a way to extend a hand, but it's at the same time use the other hand to push back against the things that we've seen in a large part from the last administration over the last four years. And I'm interested, Tom, obviously we're one day after Inauguration Day. Are National Guard troops still there? What's the tone like in Washington, D.C. at this time? Yeah. I can tell you that it feels like a valve on a pressure cooker has eased a bit. Um, however, to answer your question, yes, the National Guard troops are still in place and the National Guard troops are going to remain in place, at, l at least a sizable portion of them. At one point, we had as many as 25,000 National Guardsmen on duty here in the nation's capital. Now, we've been told that a contingent of National Guard will remain here in the Washington, D.C. area for the next 30 days. Uh, some of that is the work of tearing down some of these roadblocks and inscalable steel fencing that have gone up over the last couple of days and removing some of the military equipment that has been put in and around D.C. Uh, some of it is simply precautionary. Uh, there is still chatter that U.S. intelligence officials, especially on the domestic front, are paying very close attention to. Uh, there was concern on Sunday that state capitals in particular may have been targeted uh, by some of these interests. There was a concern clearly yesterday that the inauguration itself may have been a target. So that 30-day period will serve as a, a bit of a, a transition 
and, and, and a way for them to stand down those troops as we move farther away from the riot and as we move farther away from the inauguration. And, you know, all morning and honestly all night, we were covering movement in the White House and now in the Capitol. Can we talk about mm -hmm. Biden's first day in office, yeah. hours after sure. being sworn in? We have press briefings. We have executive yeah. orders. Uh, today, we have confirmation hearings for uh, cabinet yeah. members. You know, do you see this being the future for Biden's administration, such a fast pace, honestly? Well, you know, a lot of us who cover Washington are getting a bit of a news whiplash today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the previous administration, you know, went one stretch with more than 90 days without any press briefing. And as I stand here talking to you right now, we have had two within 24 hours with the new White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Um, we also did hear from uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci today, who is the new a chief medical advisor to the president of the United States, and his tone was remarkably different in the White House briefing room. Now, as far as, you know, activity by the president himself today, we did see him as well today laying out a strategy for combating COVID-19. The president has signed 15 new executive orders, many of them dealing uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic and, and changing the nation's footprint on responding to the pandemic. But there were other things as well. You know, the United States re-entering the Paris um, Accords to uh, you know, a deal with climate change. So um, on Capitol Hill, uh, they are starting to get some movement now on the, on the cabinet uh, nominations. The uh, director of national intelligence has been approved by the Senate today. And also um, the waiver uh, for General Austin to become the uh, defense secretary, that passed the House easily today. It, it appears to be on track with the Senate as well. Uh, we expect uh, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, those are usually the first three to go in. And uh, Pete Buttigieg, the uh, nominee for the Transportation Secretary, also had his uh, first confirmation hearing today. So it appears as if all of these nominees for the cabinet positions are on track. However, you know, if it was up to the administration, they would have liked to have had, you know, some of these people, if not all of them, in place by now. And I am getting in right now that the Senate has passed that waiver for uh, Biden's Pentagon yeah, pick, yeah. Lloyd Austin. So that clears the path for confirmation. Yeah. Now we'll wait for that vote from the Senate. Last question for you, Tom. I'm sorry, it's too busy right now to not pick your brain. Sure. Um, let's talk impeachment. <laughs> Keep going. We're fine. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I know. We could talk for uh, hours. Well, you know, that one is, uh, 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 yeah, that one is a little more up in the air. Now, initially, when impeachment was passed last week, might feel like it was a month ago, but it was only last week, um, there was word, you know, especially from the, the House Majority Whip, Jim Clyburn, that they might take impeachment, maybe, say, put it on a shelf for 100 days. You know, mm -hmm. let the Biden administration get some road underneath it wheels if you will um it appears now that the indications that they might move on this sooner rather than later that they think they can you know for lack of a better term you know walk and chew gum at the same time uh there's possibly talking about a three-day trial in the senate uh, sooner than 100 days from now one of the big problems though i'll tell you daytona is President Trump, former President Trump, we're going to have to get used to saying that, um, apparently has not lined up any legal counsel just yet. It had been mentioned some other folks uh, in the last week or so, Rudy Giuliani having been one of them. But Giuliani had backed out saying that since he had spoken at the rally preceding the Capitol riot uh, back on January 6th, that that made him, in his opinion, a material witness to everything that happened in that place. And so that he would not be able to serve. There were some, you know, other people who have been suggested. But so far, uh, that will be an issue because one of the things Democrats have said, and even some Republicans have said, that it would be important for the former president of the United States to have a fair trial. In order to have a fair trial, you have to have representation by an attorney. Also, you know, one of the big questions constitutionally right now is, can this proceed? Can you hold an impeachment trial for a former president? president that one might wind up in the supreme court because as you know we've never been here before nobody's ever tried to do this before so we don't quite know whether or not that is something that is constitutional or whether the impeachment power expires when a presidential administration expires
A lot of right. questions about this. Right. Also, what does it entail, uh, you know, with holding office in the future? I know that's a question that a lot of people yeah. uh, have been bringing up. I, I'm curious, what do you have your mind on? What are you looking for in the week, in the coming days? I mean, things change so quickly nowadays. Uh, what, what are you watching? Yeah. You mean besides sleeping? <laughs> well, you're sleeping at the Capitol. We already declared that <laughs> earlier in the interview. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, the 18 hour day yesterday had something to do with that. Uh, no, I mean, I think, and look, anytime you have a new administration come into the White House, it almost breathes a different life here into the nation's capital. The city almost kind of takes on you know, the, the uh, osmosis of that administration, no matter who it is. Mm. And so, you know, when Donald Trump was president, this was a highly, highly charged environment. Very high emotions, you know, railing almost daily for four years here. Now Joe Biden comes in with uh, his team and the vice president, Kamala Harris. There's a different tone. There's a different style. One of the things the Biden team wants to do is, frankly, be a little boring. You know, get into the, you know, the nitty gritty of governing, not so much having to be the center of the news universe every single hour of every single day. Uh, so, you know, one of the things you might look for is the return of the slow news day. And some people think that would be nice. Yeah, every now and then a slow news day is nice. We haven't had many of those recently. Well, uh, Fox 5's Tom Fitzgerald right. out there, um, we appreciate you. Even though you're not at the Capitol, we'll talk to you soon. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay no warm, stay safe.